Hello and welcome back to another KCC video, I'm Rob and today we'll be jumping into Tales from Tech Support. Before we start, please hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so you know when the next video goes live. Our first story today comes to us from Macross X. Crazy lady breaks three PCs to avoid work before upper management will do anything about it. Let's jump right in. Disclaimer, this office was not at all cold. Nowhere near cold enough to need a space heater. There's always one lady that has to have one. First ticket for insane lady. Desktop keeps overheating and shutting down. I am behind on work and missing deadlines because of this repeating issue that has resulted in lost work. She had a space heater under her desk pointing directly at the desktop because her feet get too cold in the AC office. I removed the unapproved heater, ran tests, the desktop was fine. Checked the events log and it had only ever shut down or crashed once from overheating. I explained that I only show one shutdown from overheating. Explained that you can't expect a PC to not overheat when heated. Made notes in the ticket, delivered the space heater to facilities manager. She raised a big stink with her manager who talked with the facilities manager and had the heater returned with a facilities approval tag. They didn't involve me at all and the unit was placed exactly back in the same spot. Second ticket for insane lady very next day. Desktop is overheating again. I cannot continue to work like this. Fix it or replace my desktop with a laptop. I show up and see the heater right back where it was. What? Desktop is off and actual hardware damage was done to the motherboard this time. I replace it with a spare desktop of the same make and model. I route all cabling and place desktop on desktop so it won't melt from the space heater. She complains how the small form factor desktop takes up too much room on her double sized cubicle desk space and she should have a laptop. I explain that I didn't have a laptop available and it actually takes up less space than a laptop anyhow once you factor in the docking system. I explain again that the space heater killed the previous machine and it should not be placed next to a heat source. I CC her manager on the ticket. I also let my manager know about the whole deal at this point because both cases were totally avoidable. Third ticket for insane lady two days later on a Friday. New desktop is overheating and shutting down just like last one. I am weeks behind on project work at this point. Please give me a laptop that won't have this type of problem. I show up right after the ticket was created. She was packing up her stuff to leave and looked put out that I even showed up so soon to deal with the issue. The desktop was on the floor next to the space heater. I ask her why she moved it back there after killing the previous desktop and after clearly explaining that it caused the problem. She wasn't having it, said it took up too much room and she should have a laptop anyhow. This time the desktop wouldn't even post. I noticed the heater was on the highest possible setting and it was aimed directly at the PC this time. There was something about how visibly annoyed she was that I was going to fix it like she was ready to take an early weekend since she couldn't work anyway. I explained I would have a replacement ready within 30 minutes, more to gauge her reaction than anything, and she looked even madder. Is it going to be a laptop? I don't see a replacement being worth it if it's just going to melt under my desk again. I agreed. Under your desk is probably a bad idea. If she wanted a laptop, she would have to get her boss to approve the purchase of one. I took the dead desktop and brought back a replacement desktop. We got loads of spare used stock. Within 20 minutes, she was gone. Cubemate said she left for the day since IT wouldn't have a replacement ready anyhow. I documented everything in the ticket and called my manager. Manager didn't seem to care at all. He did stress that I was not to give her a laptop replacement unless her department approved and paid for it though. I was busy enough that this pissed me off. I walked over to HR and explained the situation so far to the HR rep. 
She said she would talk to the user's manager about it. I didn't expect much. Sure enough, the following Monday, I had a ticket to deploy a brand new laptop to the user. Since the space heater was under the desk and the way the cubicle desks were built, there was a space behind the tops for cable routing. This meant the majority of hot air from the heater would vent right up that space, which would feed directly into the air intake on the docking stations. Since that was the case, I deployed the docking station, laptop, etc. to the right of her monitor instead of the left where it would get hit with heat. Once again, she complained about it, taking up too much room there, can't we put it on the other side? I once again explained that heat will kill a laptop twice as fast as the two desktops she already killed. After closing out the ticket, I sent an email to her and CC'd her manager, my manager, and the HR lady. I explained the problems the space heater had caused and that it was her refusal to listen that had caused damage to multiple pieces of company property. I let her know that moving the laptop to the other side of her desk would very likely damage the brand new laptop and it should not be done and would result in further delays in her ability to finish her projects. Fourth ticket from insane lady two days later. Laptop will not turn on. Leaving for the day. Please fix or replace. It was 10 a.m. on Wednesday. She wasn't there. Laptop was moved to left side of desk. Space heater still on full blast, pointing backwards. Without touching anything, I called the facilities guy. He agreed that the heater shouldn't have ever been returned. Agreed that this woman could have burned down the whole damn building. Brand new laptop was toast. Took photos of everything. Emailed her boss, CC'd HR and my manager. Apparently, her manager didn't even know she left for the day. She was two weeks behind on a big project. Kept blaming IT for messing up her schedule with PCs that didn't work. I pulled the drive, dumped all the data, was able to easily show she hadn't done any work for said project at all in the last month. Never saw insane lady again after that. Much stricter rules were put in place for space heaters after that, so at least I dealt with less overheating issues. It's just frustrating that I could tell pretty quickly she was full of crap but couldn't really do anything about it. Just how underqualified was this woman if she was knowingly sabotaging company equipment and hadn't done any work on her project for a month? OP was right, they're lucky she didn't burn the whole building down. Our second story today comes to us from Devil Renegade. What do you mean we told you to stop the backups? Let's jump right in. So a bit of background first. I used to be a shift team lead for a hosted outsourcing company that provided our own software on AS400 based systems to various financial institutions. Some of these companies were very small and only had a single box. Some were larger and had a pair of boxes, usually one serving as the live environment and one as the test environment. Others had more for different functions. Some did all their own development, others paid us to do their dev and bug fixing work for them. One of the most important things we handled in the NOC was physical backups. Each box had its own backup schedule, where it would back up to IBM Altrium tapes. Each morning, one of our tasks was to remove the tape from the previous night's backup, scan the barcode, and send them off-site to our secure storage facility. Once that was done, we'd make sure the scratch tape for the next scheduled backup was loaded and ready to go. This one company we dealt with had both a live and test environment, and had their own in-house developers. Initially, they were both backed up nightly, but due to a cost-limiting exercise, the IT manager on their side submitted a change request to limit the test system to one backup per week to be carried out on a Friday night. No problem amend the backup schedules, and update the documentation to reflect the change. All sorted. I wasn't there when all of this happened, but it was all included and documented on the shift handover report when our team took over, so we know we didn't have to load tapes for this particular box until Friday. About eight months later, we received a P1 ticket in the NOC from one of their developers. This happens on a Thursday afternoon. I'm sure you can see where this is going by now. Help! 
Library ABC 1234 on the test system was just accidentally deleted. Please, can this be restored from last night's backup urgently? My tech who received the ticket confirmed with me correctly that they were now on weekly backups on this particular box. And the most recent backup we had was almost a week old. My tech relays this back to the end user in an email. The user calls back immediately. No, that's not good enough. If that's the most recent backup you have, that means we've lost almost a week's worth of critical work. I need to speak with your supervisor immediately. I duly took over the call. Your colleague has just informed me that you've stopped backing up this system daily. This is unacceptable. As I heard my colleague explain, the backup schedules are decided by your company. And as this was a test system, as opposed to a live environment, the decision was taken on your side to reduce the backup frequency from daily to weekly. You need to speak with your IT department for clarity on this. I'll do that. You haven't heard the last of this. About half an hour later, another one of my guys gets a call asking to be put straight through to me. Yes, this is John Smith, the systems manager from company XYZ. I just had an interesting conversation with one of my developers stating that you've stopped doing our backups that we're paying you to perform. Just for your information, this call is being recorded and I've got a conference call with our solicitors in 15 minutes, whereby if this is not resolved satisfactorily by that time, we will be filing a lawsuit for the cost of our lost development work and a recording of this call will be used as evidence. Wow, talk about aggressive. I explained to the guy that eight months ago, someone at their company submitted a change request that we reduce the backup frequency on this system from daily to weekly, and this was carried out as requested. Well, that's just insane. Nobody here would have done that. I need the name of the person who submitted the request as well as the person on your side who actioned the request without verifying that the request was received from an authorized member of our cab. Okay, well, I wasn't on shift when that change was made, but it will have been documented on our ticketing system. Bear with me a second. Ah, here we go. So the request was made on April 12th this year by a John Smith systems manager. That's you, right? Um, that's not right. There must be another person here with that name. You've got two John Smiths, both working as system managers? Does that not get confusing? No, um... I don't recall asking you to do this. Well, we have the email saved to the original ticket, along with several emails back and forth, where we asked you to clarify a couple of points, and also a scanned copy of the signed change form, where you've written your name and signature. Did you want me to forward these over for your solicitors? Although, I suspect you might already have copies of them, if you check your send items folder. Um, no, that's fine, thanks. I'll let the developers know that you can't recover the file. That'd be great, thanks. Is there anything else I can help you with today, Mr. Smith? Click. Printed off the ticket and dug out a copy of the call recording to forward around to the team, and I added this to my training guides for new hires as an example of why documenting everything is critical. Always remember rules 1 through 10 of tech support. Cover your arse and document everything. So what they're saying here is that users lie, users forget, users forget they lied, users lie about lying, users lie about forgetting, users forget that they lied about forgetting about lying, then they lie about that. In short, users lie and forget. Thank you to both OPs for posting their stories in the Tales from Tech Support subreddit. They are linked in the description below. Please go check them out. Check out one of these other videos, and if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button for more daily Reddit stories.